mm. test release or something. It has chance. It was a joke at the beginning ah. when we did it. Because we have one of our most famous poets was Bernard Dimé. And Bernard was a friend of mine. Unfortunately, I've I have met him at the end of his life, so I, I couldn't live very long time with him. But we became very close friends, and um, one night we were in a restaurant with another composer who is dead now, is Michel Magne. And Michel and Bernard was there, were there, and we, they spoke about uh, Morocco and about uh, things like that. And um, they just joked together, and and they Bernard started to write on the table a few lines, and Michel was imagining um, music on it. And when we came back home, all together, we started just to as a joke to make it, and uh, the joke has become a record. But uh, Barclay didn't want it to. To, to to play on that because it was a jo it was just a joke I didn't ha even ha didn't have my no my name on but it was a sometimes you you have things like this that right. happen yeah. but it was a good experience because I worked with two great artists yeah so it, that is a very collectible record we oui. yeah. absolutely yeah. I I really don't know if if some people have many I think they have pressed maybe. 500 or 1,000 of these, that's all. And I just have the jacket, I even not don't have the record. <laughs> <laughs> so, can you tell me a little bit about how you came to sign, originally, you know, to begin with, with Epic? Oh! How you were introduced to them, or was it through connections from John Perrier, or...? No, 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 no. At that time, I was living. No, at that time, I was living with uh, with one of my um, friends, and uh, we came in Paris uh, together. And he has been my manager for all the time until '87. He has been my manager, and uh, I was signed with Barclay, but Barclay didn't want it to promote anything on me because at that time, Grey Mathieu was coming on the market and Barclay wanted to promote Mireille. And as I had almost a similar uh, voice, yeah. he did want it to have on the market two voices who be concurrent and yeah. who could maybe uh, kill Mireille or be too much in concurrence with her. And at that time, he signed me for three years, but didn't want it to, to um, record anything or to put on the market any record so my friend at that time said that's not fair you have to leave her away and uh, he has quarreled a lot with them so they give me my contract back and then he went to CBS and asked them if they were interested by my voice and they said yes so he signed me there but it was a hard hard fight yeah. and then later on I met Barclay Eddie and um, he um, was, he said, I'm sorry that if I knew, <laughs> yeah. maybe I and should have both. kept you. Yeah. And I say, well, Eddie, you know, the train passes only once in the station. <laughs> <laughs> so you missed the train. Yeah. So, trying to have records, the first release is... Uh, uh, un peu romantique. So, oui. can you tell me a little bit about that because I'm finding more out about this all the time. Was that one of the possibilities for Fran France in Eurovision in 1971 or two? Um, to be honest, uh, I remember something that's. There's a little bit. David seems to have written something about that. Yes, because it was right that at that time uh, we tried. Not me, but my, my, my artistic director. He tried to propose that song to the French selection, right. and um, as far as I've heard, they loved the song, but they didn't. They didn't keep it. They didn't. They, they preferred something else. Well, it was it was good for uh, Severine. Then yes. she won. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But 
he had a brilliant song. So, as I told you, it was not the time, the right time. Yeah. So I've made a good, a good. Um, but maybe it got that you your name in the mind of some people anyway. Yeah, 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 sure. Scenario. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. But it, that is that's a single, a, a sample, or a forty-five that's released, mm -hmm. first release. Now. So, can you tell us? How successful that was. Looking back on it now, well, it was it was nice. Did they push it, it was, as much as you? Oh wanted? yes, oh yes, yes, yes. I've made the the maximum of TV with that, yeah. and lots of uh, lots of um, uh, radio station loved it and played it. And I was a kind of Lolita yeah. at the time, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they were very keen on that. Yeah. So I think I, at this time I was corresponding it uh, to um, a certain idea of the young lady at the time and I was um, I was speaking easily and I was a good client for TV and radios so you know when, when you when you suit to something of course it gives something and then after that I had to grow up because then otherwise people Keep in mind that you are still you are still a Lolita, and they all pro always propose you that kind of songs. It's always the same problem. You, it, it was difficult for me to grow up in this business because my face didn't change quickly. So I wanted to sing more adults, more women's uh, problems and, and and lyrics. My face was like a, a kind of Lolita angel, Lolita, and so when and today when I watch at the TVs. And I watch two all the TV shows. I say I can understand why they they were not able to to change my my, my the songs they proposed me because my face was too young. Plus, at that time in the seventies, when you're twenty one, that's like being thirty one today, isn't it? Because you were expected to grow up much quicker mm -hmm. than the men. So. Mm -hmm. Um, that's why I guess looking back now, some of the songs that you did look a little bit odd for a young lady to be singing. Yeah. And uh, so that explains that at least. Um, and also, there's a theory about that song, again, in retrospect, that it's a waste of a voice and it's not Anne Marie because it's a bit different to everything that came afterwards, isn't it? That one. Yeah. So, I think it, personally, I think it's a great record on its own. I, I love as, as it. Record, I still, yeah, I very st you know, I, everything I've done, I've never been forced to do it. I mean, it was always a proposition, of course, oriented. But I cannot say that I have recorded something that I didn't like. The only thing is that I was too young to measure how it is important to have a career plan because I left it to other people and I thought they, it's their duty they must know what they do and in that case I was wrong because an artist must always not control but I mean um, look after the image people want to um, carry on because after the costume has been made and you have to wear it and um, maybe the tailor was wrong <laughs> but then you know it later yeah 